Amen. God is good, isn't he? Tracy, that was awesome. That was, that was awesome, you know. Um, it's cool because if you look at what happened, Tracy had a struggle. Tracy had something going on inside of her. First, she asked. Then, she sought. She came to the church and she said, God, I'm going deeper with you. I need help. I need, I need deliverance from this guy. But she expected deliverance. She expected what was coming. She knew that it was coming. Just like her song, the second part where she said, I'm going to, she was prophesying over herself. We were prophesying over ourselves. She's speaking life, you know, into that. And that's what Tracy was doing through that. And now look at what the result was. She had a great, the first good day at work that she's ever had. It works. It works. You just have to follow, follow what he says. I mean, it's, it's so simple that we, and we sat there through all this time in so many of us, our lives, you know, Marilyn and I have looked back plenty of times and just kind of grinned, just like, man, was it really this easy this whole time? Did we spend 40 years trying to figure everything out, and this is all we had to do was just step out of the way, you know, and, and let him take over. But what I saw was Tracy, did it, Tracy made a change, you know, and I've seen that at the Mission House a lot lately, too. There's been a change here, and it's, it's exciting. It's a cool change, you know. It's I'm looking at, at what's going on. I see, I see people with the kids. I see people with the older kids. I see more people joining the ministry. I see, I mean, there, there's things happening at the mission house, and it's exciting to see that, you know, because God tells us, I will build your church. Just be obedient, and I will continue to build your church for you. Don't worry about who's here right now and who's not here. I will bring them to you. You know, and, and he's just, this is just another example of what he's fulfilling, his promises to us. And... Most people don't like change. You know, most, most, of, us, most of us think change is a, is a bad thing. You know, it's, change is, is good when it goes for us. You know, when, when, when the change works in our favor, it's a good thing. And these people are smart, and they're making a good decision, and they're doing a really good job with what they're doing. But when change doesn't go our way, when it goes the other way, all of a sudden, they're worthless. They don't know what they're talking about. That's not a man of God. That's not a woman of God. Look at the decision they're making over there. This is hurting me. You know, and, and we look at it like it's all about us, but change is, is always a good thing. You know, change is always a good thing if it's God doing it. You know? And as I was putting this, this word together for tonight, he taught, me a, he taught me a good lesson. This is actually, I mean, so I'm partially giving a testimony that with this word tonight. You know, he... Um, I had, I had things that God had been giving me over the, the course of time, and I always scribble stuff down. I've got these, I got like three different books, you know, this book is for this, and this book is for that, and, um, and I had all these things, and I've been asking God for, for almost a month, I was like, man, where is all this coming together? Why are you giving me all this? Because it's, it's not a bunch, but it's a handful of this and a handful of that, and somehow I know you want me to bring this together. And then as soon as Pastor said that I was going to talk on Thursday night, it felt like, like that night, just all of a sudden, he gave me a word, and it all just kind of came together. All of it came together all at once. And I said, oh, yes, you know, I can do this. And I start scribbling all this stuff down. And I'm all excited. And then yesterday morning, I'm looking at it. I'm in prayer. And I'm, I'm going back and forth with God. And I'm talking to him. And I'm saying, God, I got one page, brother. This, that's the one page isn't enough. I need more. You, know, you got to give me more. I don't know what I'm not doing. I don't know what I'm not hearing. But there's something that I'm not hearing from you. you know, I'm, not, I'm not on track the right way. Show me, show me what's on track. And, again, he says, ask and you'll receive. All you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is talk to him. It's so simple, but I guarantee that at least half of y'all in here, when you run into something, the first thing you do is not ask God for help. I, I guarantee that. You know, and, and that's all you have to do. Try it. If you're not doing it, try it and just see what happens. See what, see what he does when he comes in and shows up. You know, it's, it's awesome. So what he did with me was... He basically came in and said, throw it out. Throw it out. This is yesterday. All right, if I, those that know how I prepare when, when I come up and talk is I pray a lot. You know, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll confirm and I'll reconfirm and I'll say, God, are you sure this is what you said to me? Am I sure this is what you said to me? And it takes a while. So when I heard throw it out with basically half a day, you know, until this morning, man, I started, I was scared. Yeah, I was just so what do you, I, I'm not, come on, man. I was like, you know, and I said, I'm not Pastor Jim. I'm not Pastor Jimmy here. I, I can't just sit down 
and, and come up with a word in, in 20, 30 minutes? And he answered right away. And he said, son, you think that's Pastor Jimmy doing all that? He said, you think, you think Pastor Jim is the one coming up with all this? He said, Pastor Jim is just being obedient. He's just being the vessel. I'm the one doing it. This is me. You know, and, and that showed me, get out of the way. Just, just step aside and, and watch me run. Step aside and watch what I'll do. You know, and, and as soon as I stepped aside, 15, 20 minutes, four or five pages. Just, I mean, it was amazing what he downloaded. And, and this may not be a long word. It may be quick, but I'm going to do exactly what he told me to do. I'm going to deliver it the way that he delivers it, and, and, and we'll go with that because I know this is for somebody in here tonight. You know, and, and I can say that as he was dumping this on me, I felt a lot of conviction about this. You know, I felt a lot as he was dumping this. And, I, and honestly, I don't know how anybody is going to go through this, talk about change and changing ourselves and not feel something. You know, because every single one of us has something. If you're convincing yourself that you, I don't sin, I have no problem, you're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. The Bible says everyone falls short of God's, you know. And so, you know, and, and everybody has to change. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to change as you, as you progress in life. You know, for those, has anybody been in the Army? Anybody in the service? Anybody in here? Okay. So you know that... If you're, if you're a non-commissioned officer, you go into officer candidate school and you become an officer, you have to change. You have to change the way that you think, the way that you act to go from, an, from a non-commissioned officer to an officer. You have to change something. You know, if, if you're a salesperson, I've always been in sales. If, I'm, if I go from a sales rep to a sales manager, I have to change something. Something did get me there. Some, my actions and, and the way that I, that I carry myself got me to that promotion, but it's time to step up a notch. You have to step up a little bit when you get to that next level, when you get promoted into that next level, because now you're responsible, the responsibility grows. You know, and, and that's what this was showing me with some of the changes that I've seen at the Mission House, and it's exciting stuff. Um, you know, when we were on Aetna, and, and, and Pastor got the word that somebody wanted to do what they were going to do with this building. If you don't know the story of this building, it's, it's, I mean, it's of God. There's no way you can argue that this story is of God. Nobody gives somebody this. For, you know, they just gave it to us. I say, here, bless you. You know, that is of God. And, you know, there was people at church with us, and they were saying, well, if y'all if y'all move out there, we ain't coming. Because that's ridiculous. Why are we going to move all the way out to Loon Creek? You know, we're going to move out to Loon Creek because God told us to move to Loon Creek. That's why, because we're changing. God tells you to change, you change. God tells you to throw out what you're doing right now and start over, that's what you do. You know, and, and, and that's what's been going on here at this church. And as we come out here, I see more people. I see more people that are being active, that are standing up and saying, I want to be part of God's family and God's ministry. I see people riding their bike from, from downtown Huntington. Come on, that is exciting stuff, man. That's awesome. You know, we've got a 17-year-old who comes up here, just opens herself up, completely transparent to the whole family. Not because she wanted to, because God told her to. Because she did what God told her to do, because she was obedient. And I just, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited about that. You know, they were, Pat, uh, David was showing pictures of, of Marilyn and me when, when we first got here. And, and one of the last processes, I guess you could say, that, that I went through at least, in my mind, when we were going through this addiction was, you know, I had been arrested. I meant to bring pictures, and I brought the wrong disk drive, so I don't have the pictures. But I actually have something that has all my mug shots saved, every single one of them. And, and as, I, as I was looking at that, you know, as I'm, as I'm sitting here getting high every day, all day, and, and just, just destroying everything. I mean, we're, we're in and out of the hospital, and we're fighting all the time, literally, like, <laughs> fighting. And just ruining our lives. You know, so that, that causes you to get depressed enough. And then you just keep getting high because you feel sorry for yourself because you don't have any hope. Pastor said that the other day. When it, if you don't have hope, that's why you're getting high. You know, and he was right on point with that. He was right on point with that. You know, we all said at the time, I love it. I just, I get high because I want to. I get high because I like being high. I don't know how else to explain it. I just like being high. That's not it. It's because you see no future. You see nowhere to go. You don't see anything ahead of you that's promising at all. So all you do is you just continue killing yourself. 
and, and, you, and you start hoping that this needle is the last one. You know, you start hoping that this injection is the last one. You start hoping for that. So as we're at this point, one of the, the last pieces that really put me over the edge was I started realizing, you know, because I, I came from, before all this happened, I was in corporate America. And, and I had high positions and titles. And, and I started looking at myself, and I was like, man, I'll never, I'm never going to do that again, ever. I would never hire myself. If, you know, if someone's going to do a background check, they're going to see all these mug shots. They're going to see all of this stuff on me out there. Nobody is ever going to hire me. I, I, and I have no skills. I've always been sales. I don't know how to fix cars. I don't even know how to put a shingle on a roof. I pay people to do that. You know, so, so what am I going to do? I, I have no hope. There is nothing for me. You know, and that was, that was really the final nail that drove me over the edge of our addiction. You know, it was already there, but that, that's the one that just completely... Just, I lost all hope. Uh, there was no chance of bouncing back. But God. But God. You know, and most of you know the story, so I'm not going to give that part of the testimony. You know, but once God came in and kicked in the door and just showed himself and said, just, just take my hand. You know, and I took it, and, and, he, and I started going. There had to be a change. There has to be a change. And it, it, and it doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian. If you are a Christian, if you want the next level, you want the promotion, I guarantee every single one of you is praying, saying, God, move me forward. Move me into the next room. Elevate me. Put me here. Put me there. Then you have to do something different. You can't just walk and get the same thing. When God drops a blessing in front of you, what do you have to do? You have to change your position. You have to move and pick it up. You have to do something to get it. You have to change. You know, and, and that was what happened. This young man back there, he, he made a choice to change his actions. He had been making so many actions, whatever, whatever reason you showed up this morning, something was going on in your life. Nobody surrenders unless you're losing that battle. Nobody surrenders unless you've lost, unless you're surrounded and you don't know where to go, what to do. That's when you surrender. Otherwise, you're not going to. So he surrendered today. For some reason, he rode all this way. He decided enough was enough. I'm going to change. You know, and that, that, I mean, that's just, I wish I was here for that, brother, because that's awesome. I mean, that is, that is so awesome. Um, you know, and I just, I, I had to change. I had to, I had to get over myself. You know, if, if you know, when, when, those of you that know our story, you know, when we went to the altar that first, or when I went to the altar that first night, and, and I mean, withdrawal was literally taken from me on the spot, that was a miracle. But that was, and, and I was stubborn. Most people would not have to take it that far. Most people wouldn't. God's probably looking at me like, dude, really? How many times, how many things do I have to do in your life to, to get you to see me? But I just kept fighting. You know, that puppy we talked about last week, you know, the, the one struggles and fights, and you're trying to teach it how to walk, and it's shaking all around, and it won't go with you. And every puppy's different. Some of them, some of them bow down a lot quicker than some of the other ones. Some of the other ones, you get so frustrated, you just toss it to the pound. I mean, you guys take this retarded dog. I do not want this dog. But God never gives up. God never gives up on us. God knows what he can do with us. He knows what's coming. We just have to hear it. We just have to get over our pride to make the choice to change. You know, I had to make that choice that night to come to the altar to change that night. And since then, you know, the things that I've asked for, restoration of our family, are you serious? Our family was destroyed because of what we did. Destroyed. Nobody was talking to anybody. Everybody hated everybody. The only two that were loving and stuck in the middle was my daughter and my son. They were the only two. Everybody else wasn't talking. We didn't do anything over the last year other than follow God, other than follow his word. A year later, everybody's restored. Everybody's back. You know? That's what God will do. But you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to take a step, to change your environment, to change the people that you're hanging out with, to change something, you know, that you're doing. You have to humble yourself. James 4.10 says, humble yourselves, and he will lift you up in honor. I haven't asked for anything that we've gotten. I mean, I've prayed, but I haven't, I haven't done anything. I never asked Pastor Jim, let me get up and talk. I've never once asked for the microphone. I've never once, I didn't ask to be on the worship team. They had to convince me to get up here. Pastor has to convince me to get up here every time. But it's an honor to stand here on God's platform. That's an honor. 
You know, and, and that's exactly what James is talking about. Humble yourself, and he'll, live, he'll put you where you want to be. He'll give you what you want. I mean, it's, it's just it's, it's amazing what God does. You know, when, when God says to change, it's time to change. It, it's that simple. If you feel something, if you feel the tugging of the spirit, you have to listen to it. If you don't, you're missing out on something. You're missing out. And, and this is coming from someone that a year and a half ago was shooting up every day. I mean, you know, I mean, we destroyed everything. All that mattered was drugs. So nobody can, nobody can listen to, to, to what God is saying through me and, and say, oh, well, he's just another one of them holy rollers. They just, a year and a half ago, I didn't even know who Jesus was. You know, I mean, that's what God can do. And he'll do it for anybody. He doesn't favor anybody. He loves everybody the same. There's no difference between me and you. You want your family restored? Pray. Seek him. Knock on the door over and over and over. He will answer you. All you have to do is try it. You're having a bad day? Praise through it. Just like Tracy said, the cloak of praise. I don't, I don't know the verse, but you know, the, you know, the way to get through a hard day is to praise. You don't know? Try it. Instead of going home, oh, it's another day at church, you know, tomorrow's going to suck. You know, just praise your way through it, man. It's amazing what the joy of the Lord does to you. It's amazing what the joy of the Lord can do through you. You know? Um, but I don't want to change. I like doing things my way. It's comfortable doing it my way. You don't know what you're talking about. Fine, then you're going to keep getting what you're getting. You do something different, you're going to get something different. You keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same thing. You know, you're struggling with addiction right now, you're struggling with alcohol, you're struggling with drugs, you're struggling with sex, you're struggling with porn. What are you doing to get past it? Change something. Change something. Go to Jesus. He will not let you down. It, it's on his time. It's not yours. I had someone come up to me a couple weeks ago and they're like, man, I've really been doubting the Lord lately. I said, why? He said, man, I've been praying. I've been praying for two weeks for my whole family to get saved and not one of them has come to the altar yet. Two weeks. I heard a story earlier about when Isaiah prophesied that Jesus was coming. You know, that the, that the Son would be, the Son of God would be born from the Virgin. That was 700 years. 700 years from the time he prophesied till the time that it actually happened. And we're worried about two weeks. Walk in it. Hope. We just talked about hope earlier. That's what hope is. I know it's going to happen because Jesus says it's going to happen. And walk it out. You don't have to keep asking for, 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 for God to pay your car back payment, for him to pay your electric bill. He'll provide you what you need. That's a given. Give him the, ask him for the things that he's asking you for. It, the, prayer, the prayers aren't for him. They're for you. He wants to hear you say it. He wants to hear what's really coming from your heart. That's all it is. You think he doesn't know what's in your heart? You think he doesn't know what you want? But you have to say it. Out of the abundance of the mouth comes what's in the heart. Or out of the speak of the mouth comes what's in the heart. You know, and, and you just have to say it. Um, you know, but I want more of you, God. I want to increase what you're giving me. I want you to bless me just once. Just, just come in and change me. That's all I want. But I don't want to change my own choices. I don't want to change the people that I hang out with. I don't want to change the places I go. I don't want to change who I'm living with, who I'm sleeping with, whatever I'm doing. I don't want to change any of that, but I want you to give me the blessing. So basically what you're saying is, God, I want you to be my servant. You're saying, God, I want you to serve me because that's all you're good for because I'm not going to do anything to, that's in, uncomfortable. I'm not going to change anything in my life that's uncomfortable. All I'm going to do is beg you to give me what I want. What would we do if our kids did that in the world? And that's not even the love that he has for us. But what would we do if our kid, I mean, he, he, we all know obedience is more important than anything. The Bible says obedience is, even praise, obedience is what he wants. Right? What if, what if, you, what if, what if our kids, they, they make their bed, they do the dishes, they do all the chores, but their 9 o'clock curfew every single night, they blow it off and they show up at 10 o'clock. Are they obedient? Partial obedience is no obedience. You either do it or you don't. You're with them or you're not. You're hot or you're cold. 
There is no in the middle. I had someone tell me once, you can't, you can't just ride the fence because Satan owns the fence. I said, no, I'm not going to give Satan that kind of credit. He doesn't own anything because my Jesus went in and took everything from him. But he could be in charge. He could be controlling the fence. I'll give him that. You know, and, and we have to stay off the fence. It's our choice to go one way or the other. It's our choice to not care what anybody thinks about you other than the one, the one that you're here for. That's the only one that matters, what we're here for. You know, he, he, he's not going to change. We're the ones that, that have to change. Isaiah 14, verse 26 I'm sorry, 27. The Lord of heaven's armies has spoken. Who can change his plans? When his hand is raised, who can stop him? Nobody. He is not changing for us. He's been the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're the ones that have to change. We're the ones that have to make the choices to come to him. He doesn't just come in and change everything. He will give you a new heart, but you've got to ask for it. He will give you salvation, but you have to accept it. You have to make a change. In the way you think, in the way you act, in the choices that you make, you have to take a step. He says, you come halfway, I'll come halfway. You know, you have to take a step towards him. You have to do something about it. You say, well, I'm not changing. Well, who are you? Why is he going to change for you? I'm a child of God. Okay. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. I like those. I like, the one, I like, I like it when I get in those discussions. You know, I'm a, I'm a child of God. That's who I am. I don't know who you are. Ephesians. Where's it? I'm a child of God. Children, obey your parents. Because you belong to the Lord. So basically, basically what he's saying, obey your daddy and life will be good. It's simple. We're right back to how simple it was. But we want to continue doing our own thing. We want to live with someone that we're not married to. And, and, you know, hey, it is what it is. This is what it is. I thought about this before I said it. I said, man, there's some people probably going to get angry with some of the stuff I say. I'm not here for you. I'm not here for you. The Lord says, get up here and speak the truth. That's the truth. You don't have sex before you're married. That's what it is. And that's obviously going on in Huntington. It's going on everywhere. The whole world praises people for doing that. Now you get a high five. You know, I mean, that, that's, where, that's what we've come to in, in the world. Um, I came across somebody else that I was reading when I was reading through the Word. I came across somebody else that obeyed his daddy. That was Jesus. Jesus obeyed his daddy. You want to know how to do things? You want to know how to walk? Follow Jesus. And not only did he obey his dad, he obeyed his earthly parents. Here's God. God, creator of everything, spoke it all into existence, came to earth in the flesh, and he listened to a stepdad, because Joseph really wasn't his daddy. Joseph didn't do anything to Mary to, get, to bring Jesus out of this. You know, he, he listened, he basically, but he was obedient to his stepdad and his mom on the, in the world. That was powerful, man. God comes to earth. And these two were young. These two were kids, right? They were teenagers. Um, they were poor. They weren't really rich. They, they lived in an, in, in an area when they, went, when they came back for the census. They, they were in an area that was basically like a trailer park. Today's trailer park. So, you know, those of you teenagers, those of you kids that are in here, you're not listening to your parents because of their competencies or because of their capabilities. Y'all need to be listening to your parents because of what God's calling on them is. God made them your parents, not them. That's what you're listening to them for. That's why you're being obedient to your mom and your dad. That's why you're, that's why you're doing what you're doing is because of, not because of competencies. You think some teenagers that, that lived in a trailer park knew how to raise the son of God? They didn't have the, they didn't have the competency for that. They didn't know what to do. But they just did it because God, God, they did what God showed them to do. You know, and, and that's what Jesus was obedient to. David, you want to come up? You know, being, being submissive isn't easy, but, and change isn't easy. We all want to fight change. 
You know who else fight a change? You know who else did not change? The Pharisees. They didn't want to change. They knew that they were right. You know, when, when Jesus came to, came to this earth and started preaching the gospel about no one comes to the Father except through me, they, didn't, they never heard of that before. They're like, what are you talking about? This is all brand new. I'm not listening to this. God told us this. They didn't want to change. They didn't want to change their lifestyle. They didn't want to, to become more obedient. They didn't want to, to take that calling, you know, that they knew that they were supposed to take. They didn't know that they, they didn't want to follow the one they were supposed to follow. Hebrews 5, 8. See, it's, it's not just us. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Even Jesus learned obedience. He, I mean, it was God. But he was still an, a man. You know, and, and he learned through the sufferings that he went through. How many bad decisions have we, do we make? How many bad decisions have we made? And how many times are we going to suffer before we don't make that choice anymore? How many times are we going to do the same thing over and over and over before we finally just look to God and say, okay, man, what am I doing wrong? Show me. Childlike faith. Childlike faith. I see a lot of young kids out here. What would they say to you when they look up at their daddy or their grandpa or their grandma? What do they say to you when they ask you questions? Why am I doing this? Why does this matter? Why, 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 why? That's all he wants. Childlike faith. Why? Why is this happening to me, God? But you have to go to him. You have to just talk to him. And so many of us don't do it. So many of us try to run off and do it our way because we know. I've been a Christian long enough. I know what God wants me to do. No, you don't. Because that plan, that plan can change. You could be in a new room. You could be opening up a new, he might be opening up a new door and closing that old one. But you have to walk through it. You've got to walk through that room to get there. You know, it's our choice to not change when God tries to help us. That's on us. You know, our refusal to humble ourselves and to be taught. You know, how long are we going to suffer before we learn? How many times are we going to touch that hot stove over and over? How long are you going to let your marriage go on the way that it's going on? How long are you going to let your kids act the way that they're acting before you just change something? Change something. You know, if you're spending 10 minutes with them, spend 20. If you're spending no minutes with them, spend five, spend 10. Change something. Increase something. If you need an increase of God, you have to increase with them. You know, how long are we going to fight the same battle over and over and over how many, how many times are we going to say, I just can't stop getting high. I just can't stop drinking. I just can't stop looking at porn. I just can't stop getting angry at my wife. I just can't stop screaming at people as I'm driving down the road, all my anger. I just can't stop getting in trouble. How many times? How long is your pride going to keep you from walking through that next door? How long is your pride going to stop you from just getting up and saying, Lord, do what you got to do with me. Work on me. Change me. Make me better. You, know, you have to change. You have to change. If you want more, change more. Alter your choices. Alter your thoughts. Alter your actions. And, you, and, the, and the results will alter them. It will. I'm living proof of that. And I know better. He does not favor me. So you can't sit there and say, well, he never does for me. Yes, he would. He will do that for your marriage because he did it for ours. He will do that for you because he did it for Pastor Jim. He will restore your family because he's restored families throughout this whole congregation. You just have to do it. You just have to pick it up. You have to drop your pride.
do something different tonight. See, every, every, every other time I've been up here, I've always been really, really passive about it. You know, just kind of, hey, you know, if you need to change something in your life, the altar's open, David's going to play for you for a little bit. If you think that there is nothing in your life that you need to change right now, stay in your seat. If everything is perfect in your life, stay in your seat. Otherwise, we need to be at the altar trying to alter our lives. You know, we need to be at the altar trying to ask him for more, trying to ask him to get more. So that's what I'm inviting everybody to do. I'm not going to force everybody to get up, but I can't imagine that anybody has everything. Thank you, Jesus. Unforgiveness is like holding a hot coal. It only hurts the person that's holding it. If you've got ten coals in your hand and you drop nine of them, you still have a hot coal in your hand. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. Forgive them. says forgive others the way that I'm forgiving you and our Father will forgive you. We have to forgive. We have to get that heart to know. Just like Jesus said, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Please forgive them. He spoke for the whole world. Forgiveness is key. We have to move forward. You have to get down to the root of what's really causing you to be angry, what's really causing you to do drugs, what's really causing you to drink, what's really causing you just to not forgive. Get to the root. The Holy Spirit will help you get there. He will show you. Father, I thank you for bringing me to this family. I thank you for everybody here. I thank you for the changes that you've made in my life and that you continue to make in everybody here. Lord. I thank you for the changes that I see here at the Mission House. Those changes are only happening because of your presence, because of the hearts you're touching, because of the conviction that you feel, that you, that you put on us. And I thank you for that, Father. We embrace your conviction. We embrace your presence. We beg you to continue showing us what we're doing wrong, what's not of you, so that you can burn it out of us, so that you can continue to purify us. Scrape the sledge and put us back in the burner again, Lord. Give us a heart of flesh. Take away any, any roots of bitterness, any hurt, the unforgiveness, anything that we need to change, Lord. Take that from everybody here tonight. I speak life over everybody here, Lord. I speak peace, happiness, love, joy, all of the 
the fruits of the Spirit over everybody in here tonight, Lord. And as everybody leaves, just keep all of us protected. Keep protection around everybody in their families, Lord. Continue healing everybody that you're healing in here. Anyone that needs your, your healing, Father, continue doing your miracles in them. Anyone that needs deliverance, Lord, I just ask that you just work your miracle of deliverance. You say ask and receive, I'm asking, Father. We're all asking. You say where two or more are gathered in your presence, you're there. You've got a lot more than two. We know you're here. We know that you hear us. We're going to walk this out. We praise you, Father. We thank you for everything that you do. I thank you for working through me and Mary. I thank you for what you're doing in our life. I thank you for coming into my life and showing me the truth. Showing me what real love is. Showing me what true joy is. Showing me the miracles do happen today. You are a God of miracles. We praise you for that. And we're going to praise you. We're going to love you. And we're going to try to make the changes that you desire out of us. Father, we praise you. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Hallelujah.